the ultimate question at a dinner party, and you respond, I teach students math. When people hear that, they take a large step back from you. But when the dinner bill comes, they always give you the bill and want you to divide it evenly and split the tip. So why is language and math so difficult? Is it because of the anxiety? Is it because it's boring? Because it takes time? I really think it's the language, because a lot of things get lost in translation. To help illustrate quantitative literacy, I thought I would choose a childhood favorite for all of ours, breakfast cereal. There are two types of cereal, sugar-free and actually good cereal. <laughs> language has two parts, nouns and verbs. Even mathematics has the language of nouns and verbs. Graphs, numbers, symbols, equations, even the 3D shapes of Count Chocula. Hey, it's the closest thing that we have to a math breakfast cereal. <laughs> the actions of mathematics are transforming and manipulating, modeling and formulating, communicating and inferring. For example, how does Count Chocula stack up versus other vampires? <coughs> With the help of clinical research, we can clearly see that the breakfast monster easily defeats the movie team Twilight Heartthrob. Even though literacy has the intervention of alphabet cereal, English language is very confusing. Multiple meanings for words. He ate eight potato chips. And Brad, the last one's for you. The language of mathematics is very confusing. The teacher says, divide 248 by 2 as many times as possible. Student, I get 124 every time. <laughs> the confusion between feet squared and square feet. Technology, the terminology is also contextually dependent. For example, when we look at what's more nutritious, is it a frog eating cereal or is it Twinkies? The data actually shows that Twinkies more nutritious. Numbers that we have are confusing. If we look at the number 12, it has two parts to it from two different languages. Two and leave, literally meaning 10 leaving two. But 13 has nothing to do with the language of 12. Contrast that to Chinese numbers. They use less vocabulary and reflect decimal structure. Our children would greatly benefit if we had numbers that had decimal structure to them. They'd probably benefit from eating pie cereal, too, in the morning. So sometimes we imply answer getting tricks and mnemonics to develop things, but they don't develop conceptual understanding. So you draw George's face so that you can foil with the best of them and multiply binomials for an entire chapter. Or if we look at inequalities, they can be represented with an alligator eating the bigger number. Alligator, alligator, sitting in the swamp, how many pizzas do you want to chop? My response, wait just a minute. How does an alligator eat infinity? Looking back at the verbs of mathematics, we spend the majority of our time transforming and manipulating mathematical language. We fall into the trap of believing that our students cannot problem solve without having mastered manipulation. We don't develop algorithms, though, for good reason. Our brains enjoy routine and efficiency. But brains don't develop unless they're, they're stressed. Monotonous routine leads to boredom. And contrary to what Kellogg believes, eating frosted mini wheats will not cure boredom. So we have to adjust our teaching practices. We have to decrease the amount of scaffolding. Our students need to do more practicing of mathematics and problem solving and spend less time watching us problem solve. And no, Cocoa Puffs will not help you with immunity. So we have to develop and use consistent academic language from kindergarten through 12th grade. Students need to experience the toy surprises in the box. Spend time having them play games, build things, and create things. Checks tweak their recipe to meet the needs of their customers. We need, as teachers, to tweak the questions we ask to match the cognitive demand that we require of our students. Pose questions that are open-ended and require thinking. So increase the amount of communication and speaking in your classroom. Require students to use that academic vocabulary in their writing. <laughs> Research shows that students learn better they're actively involved in discussing and arguing ideas. We must teach. Academic vocabulary deliberately and with precision. Stressing the nouns and verbs to develop lifelong problem solvers is our mission. And hopefully someday at breakfast we will achieve our ultimate goal 
that one of our students will develop a mathematical serial we can enjoy in a ball.